Hi everyone, what's up? I'm back with another PySpark coding question, which is commonly asked in data engineer interviews. The question I'm going to solve today is mentioned on the screen. I'm going to show you what this question is about and how to solve this. So please watch the video till the end. If you're interested in practicing more such PySpark questions, then you can check out the videos in the i button. And if you want to watch the entire playlist on different data engineering topics, then the link is present in the description. If you're new to the channel, then please push the subscribe button as it will help my channel grow. I post videos every week to help you clear your next interview. Also, if you found this video useful, then please click the like button and share it with your friends. Now let's get started with the video. So the question is, write a PySpark code to check if an email is in correct format or not. This is a very common PySpark interview question and in order to solve this, you have to use a rejects function. Now for every rejects function, you need a pattern and this is the pattern that I'm going to use to identify if the email is in correct format or not. Now in this video, I will explain in detail what each and every symbol of this pattern means so that you can understand it clearly and you know form a new pattern if required basis of the requirement. But before that, let's take a look at the data first. So I have these two columns, one is name and another one is email. So out of these emails, which one do you think is wrong and which one is right? So if I focus on this second one, so this is definitely wrong because there has to be a, you know, after the at the rate, there should be a domain name um, and then dot and then com. So this is uh, definitely wrong. This is also wrong and this is also a wrong format. So we have to identify those which are right and identify those which are wrong in this question. So let's dive into the solution. First, let's try to understand this pattern. If you understood what this pattern means, then you already solved the question. So here I have mentioned an email just to give you an idea what is a correct format. Now an email is divided into three parts. So whatever comes before the at the rate, then from at the rate to the dot symbol, whatever is there, that is second part. Then the third part is whatever comes after the dot. So that this part. So I've just separated them with space to make you understand that you know these parts are something that should satisfy our criteria of this pattern. Now this symbol that is the first one this means the pattern must match from the beginning of the string. Then comes whatever is within this bracket and the plus symbol and the at the rate symbol. Let's try to understand what this is. Small a to small z and capital A to capital Z 0 to uh, 9. So this means that any character any letter any number is allowed. So if I look closely, um, the first part is Sarthak. So this is just characters. So this is satisfied with this, you know, this particular criteria. Post nine, we have some special characters which are also allowed. So you can see in my email in the first part, that is the part before at the rate, there is a dot also. So this special character is also, uh, I also want to, you know, allow this. So I have to include this in the pattern. So other than dot, you can, you know, include underscore percent plus or dash. Then post this bracket so uh, we have a plus symbol so this plus means this part must repeat one or more time so you can maybe repeat this part multiple times so in order to do so you don't have to write this you know um, the bracket part again you can just include the plus signal to signify that you know multiple type of uh, set of characters might come in that satisfy this criteria then this at the rate symbol specifies the basically the at the rate symbol that is this one the middle part of an email now post this we have the next part so next part basically from uh, at the rate to the dot symbol so whatever it comes in between we have to identify the criteria or match the pattern for this so if you look closely what all is allowed so all the numbers all the characters and only few um, special characters are allowed here so in order to allow uh, the uh, first the characters let's say so in order to allow the characters we have to write small a to small z and capital A to capital Z. This covers all our A, B, C, D characters, right? Then numbers can also be allowed after at the rate. So for that, we, I have written 0 to 9. Now this uh, dot and uh, uh, dash are the only applicable or only eligible, you know, special characters that you can place after the at the rate. And this dot is not this one. Okay. Now again, I have included this plus and what this plus will do? That means that each character, uh, there might be multiple characters basically that satisfy this criteria. So here 
e is one character x is one character a is another character so there are multiple characters right so but all of them satisfy this particular criteria now post that i have to include or i have to you know add in this pattern that the dot should be allowed so in order to do so i have to use this backslash this backslash signifies that this dot is you know is a, a static character or is a symbol which we want to use in the email so this ensures that there is a dot before the top level domain that is this part so i hope up till here you might be clear of what is happening or what this symbol means now post that we have to identify the pattern of this so let's uh, dive into the third part the first thing that is eligible is small a to small z right usually in the email at the end we see dot co or dot in or dot com something like this right and they can be in the capital or they can be in the small that doesn't matter now this part checks for the top level domain uh, like dot com dot org this allows only letters or only characters so after this this uh, you know curly braces and two so this ensures that that there are at least two letters in the tld because we know the domain the end part of the domain that is a top level domain is can either be you know three or minimum it has to be two if you uh, if you remember i said that you can it can be dot in dot co or dot co dot in so minimum the number of characters should be two this ensures that now finally we have a dollar symbol at the end so this means the pattern must match until the end of the string so this is uh, the wrap up of the entire pattern i hope you understand and this is not specifically for an email but it is what we are doing is we are telling the rejects function which i'm going to show you in a while so we are telling that rejects function that whatever comes or whatever matches with this pattern only allow that okay let's move on to the function now or the main code so here is my pattern now this is my source data frame and in that i'm creating two columns one is rejects extract and i'm using the rejects extract function of pyspark so on this email column i had earlier i am applying this rejects extract and uh, what i'm doing is i am first passing the pattern which is a mandatory parameter and i'm giving a zero so what will happen is if the pattern matches the whatever value is inside the column email matches with this pattern then that a particular email or that value in the column is returned in this new column let's take an example so this first email matches with our pattern because it is a correct email so this uh, columns this value is returned into this column right now in the second one this does not match with our pattern right because there is a wrong format so nothing is returned and this zero specifies that now what i've done is an extra step there is an optional part what i've done is i've created a new column called valid email and again i'm uh applying the rejects extract now this time what i'm doing is along with this syntax i'm also giving a uh, not equal to equal, equal to empty so what happens is if empty is returned then it will uh, give you false if empty string is not returned that is this you know this value is returned then it will give you true basically this tells us that this email is correct format or if this is email is not of correct format so the link to this notebook is in the description i know it is a bit tricky to understand this pattern but try to read through this part again and try to play around this with this pattern um, i hope you and you will understand understand it then once you you know uh, practice this question uh, properly so there are other questions that i've covered as part of you know uh, my pyspark playlist the link to all those videos are in the description there are some more videos uh, related to sql and few other topics in data engineering so feel free to check them out as well for now that's it so that's it for this video if you found it useful then please share it with your friends and like the video in the coming few weeks i will i have planned many such videos on pyspark and sql interview questions so stay tuned for them and if you have not subscribed then please press the subscribe button and i'll see you next time